Hey guys, it's Tyler, and welcome to a little half episode we did. It's actually from a uh, a live video we shot on the Facebook. Just was talking ghost stories by the fire with some people from an old podcast I used to do called Ambiguous Region, and decided to record partway through. Uh, it's a little raw, and it's not the best when it comes to audio quality. I shot it on my phone, but... I hope you enjoy. I just thought they were good conversations, so I wanted to share them with you. You are listening to By the Burial Ground, hosted by paranormal investigators Tyler Carter and Chris Stan. I mean, like, we've already gotten a little bit of stuff. Like, our castle stuff was pretty cool. We had some EVPs. Rachel yeah, went over that cool. stuff. The, all oh, at that the, video, the covered bridge, that was... the residual horse, horse print. Well, when we were at the uh, Squire's, Squire's castle, castle, oh, man. Castle. Yeah, that was crazy. She listened to the audio by herself after the fact, because we just were sitting there asking a bunch of questions, and then she sent it to me. It was so it, is, it yeah. seems like though it seems been a downer of year because of that whole thing with the Molly Stark. Can't go back there now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll drop you off. <laughs> right. We can go. These yeah. You, I'm allowed. We'll drop you off and we just. What did you guys do? They got caught. Oh yeah, we got caught in Molly Stark. So yeah, we're not allowed back at it. To the page. That doesn't even in a different state. state. Them officially getting caught. It was somebody sending in their live video feed and being like, "You had trespassers on your lot." Yeah. So yeah. we were in the, oh, we yeah. were in there for about an hour. We yes. went down in these like deep tunnels underneath, and like we were like deep underneath, and we like were deep. yeah, it was amazing. The only reason we couldn't go any further is because of all the mud and stuff. Yeah. But oh, dude, it was it was Who so was crazy. Some guy from what Kentucky? In no, Indiana. Missouri. Missouri. Was it Missouri? It was Missouri. Okay. Of, uh, the, what's it called? Church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh man, it was ridiculous. He, he was like trolling. He says yeah. we weren't real Let's investigators. Go. Don't tell me any <laughs> other investigators website, don't trespass <laughs> once in a while to get the good stuff. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Have you seen that parody? Rachel's got some good stories from back in the day. <laughs> oh, I still got stuff from Indiana too. Old school and uh, Amish lantern following us. Yeah. So I thought we were going to talk about the, our, our, our worst experiences. Worst Biggest thing ever happened to us. Mine is definitely, I don't know if it was directly paranormal related or like something, you know, a spirit or something. But I've had sleep paralysis happen twice. And both times... Right? Yeah, well, yeah. I and I had it at uh, when I was a kid. I had it in one of the trailers we lived in, and then uh, a little bit later, I had it at another one of the uh, places I lived with my mom. And to get out of it and like get myself like able to move and stuff, 
I had to start like saying like get out in my head like get out you know like and stuff and, and that's how I was able to get up eventually so that was like the worst thing Hot that's topics. ever happened to me mine was the spirit that was in our apartment yeah oh, that was about that and I yeah my dreams well I mean like that was terrifying it paralyzed me no. in my dream and it was like love me like filled me with it was in it was threatening me in my dream yeah, yeah. and it was I had a in a certain room in Pennsylvania I had like night terrors a lot because I thought someone was look watching as a teenager in one of, in Pennsylvania. That was the that was the worst experience. I, and they were and it's never happened since. I don't remember much about that one. I remember when we lived in Pennsylvania though. We'll talk about it. Yes. Talk. It's like she had never seen the Titanic movie before. She was like. Eliza was age. So she saw Molly Brown and was able to like recognize her just off yeah, the picture? Yeah, she was. Uh, and then we actually had someone come over to the house in Pennsylvania and would not step foot through the door and said, I I'm not stepping foot through this door. Well, and that was also the house where we had a cat just straight up just, go missing. Yeah. Go Didn't missing get out from of the, the inside house, of the house. Nothing. Literally just go missing from the inside of the house. Could not find it. Uh -huh. Um you would see people walking up and down the steps of the house like shadow figures walking up and down the steps it was a three-story yeah. they were the um the row houses um uh -huh. where you literally could only park on the streets uh -huh. and it was like literally on the side of the mountain yeah um and you would literally hear people walking up and down the steps mm -hmm. in the house um Nobody you would, in the you would be sitting in the living room and you would literally see someone walk by the door. Like, we were all terrified to go in the basement. Like, nobody yeah. would go in the basement. None of us basement. the basement. Yeah, the basement's always yeah. a weird. Well, and yeah. our laundry room was down there, so it was like, if we ever did laundry, we would go down in pairs because mm -hmm. we were like, I'm not going I, down I there by myself. I run down, oh, you throw everything in, and run back mm -hmm. up. I'm yeah. terrified. It's the basement's always the worst. Terrifying. You feel yeah. the worst yeah. energy in the basement. You would not go in the basement. You would literally see someone walk and it was not it was a very evil present very 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 evil but you then you had the time when Bree was sick when we lived in Pennsylvania and all of a sudden she started like miraculously getting better like yeah. and she said the girl is helping me she was like oh, what what girl? Girl. yeah she kept what saying girl? she kept saying the girl is helping me and she was like this is when she was borderline like they were getting ready to diagnose her with cystic fibrosis because of how bad everything was oh. and then all of a sudden just one day she just she was getting way better. She was like recovering. She said, she said and the, the girl who had the lung disease is helping me. What? And she was like five, six. I know. Or so you can't really make this. Up. Yeah. No. It wasn't like something where it's like she was at an, an old enough age to be like, yeah. I'm gonna fuck with them and say something really no, dumb. Like, like the she girl was with the in, lung disease. That's not what you think of when you're. Yeah. She yeah. was in so, kindergarten oh. and Jeremy was in first grade. Mm -hmm. And Eliza was only three, so Eliza didn't know anything about the Titanic. Nothing about the Titanic. She wasn't gonna sit through a six-hour-long movie no, to understand no. it. I haven't even watched it all the way through. A little. And this is six -year -old this is before it even it. came out on VHS. Yeah, because this was. <laughs> 2005, 2006. Yeah, and and so here's and then here's Brie going. The, the girl with the lung disease is helping me. And she's helping me breathe. Mm. Um, and do they was, do they remember this? No. Oh, they don't remember any of this. They don't remember any of it. They like if you mention it to them, they'll kind of be like, "Well, Eliza won't remember the Molly Brown no. comment." But no. And Brie I don't think will, I don't think Brie will remember the the breathing. Mm -mm. I know she'll remember more of the last one she was doing. But not any of Chris those ones. about this. Make fire. Man, make fire. There's what about the duplex? I don't remember much of the duplex. The demon? The demon. The I remember you telling me the story the one time, and it was just... you. I was, I was a baby, and it was before you and Kevin got married. And you were saying something about how you remember, like, putting me in the living room one day and walking around, and then you like swear up and down you saw like a little demon running around are you sure it wasn't you <laughs> no this was before I, I was even walking or crawling i lived across the street from a cemetery down in worcester yeah. Ooh. um it was it was an old it was an old old house it was an old duplex um but once again you know you would hear things um and i do remember seeing things in the house especially with her 
um, I saw my grandfather standing over her crib several times. And my, my grandfather had died oh. when I was in high school, um, about two weeks before I graduated high school. So he never got to meet Abby. Um, and I remember, I remember waking up because I kept hearing noises, and I and Abby was Abby would be talking in her crib. And I woke up, and there's my and my grandfather was standing over her crib. Um, and those were the other, only couple of times my, my papu got to see her. Um, that's, that's what we called him as papu. That's um, a Yes. Um, and then um, there was there was a couple of things in the house that I would catch. Because that was right around the time you were hanging out with uh, Millie all the time. Yeah. And she Millie had... swore up and down. She saw it too. I saw more in her house. Yeah. They were more in her house than anything. Her house was an old, old house. And that was were... what ended up turning into those crack, the meth labs that they just recently busted into recently. Yes. Okay. So there's a lot of shit that went on in those. What about the house in Fairview? Remember we had it investigated? What? Yeah. What? Yeah. We, we lived actually in the house had. in Fairview. What? Um, Wasn't that before you moved on? <laughs> no, this was when I was still married. You did tell oh. me this. No. Oh, yeah, that was when you were, because Kevin was the one who got in contact yeah, with Yeah, he got um, in contact. Um, we were having, um, I worked night shift, and he thought I was home, and he heard, he thought I came upstairs and called his name to wake him up. Uh. And he would wake up, and I wasn't home. And he kept telling me this. I'm like, I'm not home. I'm, I'm working next shift. Mm -hmm. I'm, um, and this went on for several times. And Abby's, um, your bedroom was in the basement. My room was your technically room was in the basement, supposed to be in the basement. And she ended up moving in with the girls. She, she would not sleep in the basement. the basement. And it was like a finished basement. It wasn't like a just empty it was like room. A yeah. Right? yeah. So it was like there was, was a concrete walled room. It had a bar in it, so it was technically a livable space. I just didn't like to be down there. There was something weird, but the way that the basement was set up, you went down the stairs, right off to the left oh, was the yeah. room where yeah, it was a finished room. If you kept walking straight ahead, the there was this kind of uh, unfinished, of empty room that had like it looked like the water heater was in there, pipes up on the ceiling. Track. But like you could just see the old wood from underneath the house. And it, just, it was a dark outside. and dank, very I'm damp a good room. Time here. <laughs> and then you had the laundry room next to it. Well, when they came over to investigate, once Kevin was able to get in touch with some people, like they found like there was handprints up on the pipes and they were too tall for any of us to touch. Yeah. And there wasn't any chairs down there. There was a handprint on, I think there was an old, like, wardrobe in there. There was a handprint from inside the wardrobe. They came over after Bree, after the, after the little ones were asleep. Abby was still awake. Mm -hmm. They put um, equipment down next to Jeremy's bed, and it was spiking like crazy. Uh -uh. And there was, there was entities all in that room. Um, they, oh. they didn't know what it was. One of the investigators went running out of the house. What? What? And would he not come back. And would not come back in the house. Well, and this is. I, it was on their website. I don't know if their website's still up was. anymore. Um, I know somebody there was, there local. Was pictures. Um, Tell me that. They were taking pictures from the outside, outside, and we were. They had me just sitting in the living room. They had me and Kevin and Abby just sitting in the living room. Um, and someone was outside taking pictures, and there were faces in the window from the bedroom upstairs. Oh, ho, ho. Um, so you tell me that Fairview house had, I felt No, you I, weren't in that That house. wasn't that Fairview house. No, this was this when was Kevin was still house. alive. This was a different house? This oh, was okay. when I was like you were a in freshman in high school. No, I, you were in middle school. So it was the transition from 8th to ninth mm -hmm. grade. Oh. And there was, and there was faces. And it was, it was a demon face. And they and caught like voices, and they were just like the kids were all asleep, right? Yeah, and it's the like, kids were they were all... all knocked out. So it was like it wasn't the kids talking. And obviously, since we were all in the same room, they made sure that like we talked. They recorded what we were saying and where it was. Yeah, and one and one of the investigators, and it was one of their strong ones, went out of the house, and they and they got sick, and they said they could not go back. He was in the like house. one of the big strong dudes, and he was just like, nope, I, I need to I need to go outside for a second. Out and there would not go back in. No, thank you. A while. Well, I mean, I remember that 
Rachel was telling me after we moved out of the apartment that there's a shadow figure that was like would walk into like the kitchen living room area from my bedroom and bedroom, stuff. Yeah. That's well, just crazy. I told you about the story here and I thought it was Tyler, but it was someone else. Well, yeah. yeah. On the back porch? On the back porch. She just walked. Well, and then I'll... we get the cat stuff all the time yeah. now. Yeah. We get, we get the cat all the time now. And I caught that shadow figure in a cemetery. Well, the shadow figure that went from your bedroom to the kitchen looked exactly like you. We yeah, thought it was you. Well, we thought that you came home from yeah, work Yeah, see, I times. thought it was Tyler here. We thought that you were home on lunch multiple times, but you weren't home. And we're, at first we were like, oh, it's just Tyler. But we we're like, wait a minute. Yeah, Tyler that's why I asked home. him the next day. It's not just Tyler. No, that's why I asked him. I was like, were you out this? Like, no, I wasn't. It's like, like holy crap. It was your height, your build. Yeah. I thought it was him. Tall. Slender. Shadow. Yep. Creepy time. But oh. then, that tall, friendly, familiar figure turned into this dark, 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 dark figure that kept creeping into my dreams. And, like, it would paralyze me in my sleep, and it would threaten me, and it would come up upon me, and it would just turn into this big, black, like, orb almost hovering above me. And, like, I was awake but seeing this figure, it was, it was, oh, it was threatening me, and it was terrifying. Speaking of that, in the Pennsylvania house, when I was telling you about the one time I swore up and down somebody was in our bathroom. Yeah. What? It was like right before we finally were moving, so my room was originally up on the third floor with Bree, so I could watch her when she was taking her breathing treatments, and then when we were getting ready to move, as we were moving, we were taking everything down the floor level so eventually by like the last couple weeks we were all in one room together while they were in their bedroom and our room was right next to the bathroom and at the time obviously the kids like to have the bedroom door open so that way like mm -hmm. if lights were on they could see and I just remember waking up one night and just looking over and seeing in the hallway the bathroom light on and then you seeing a shadow figure so I'm sitting there thinking, okay, it's either dad or mom's up right now going pee and they just left the door open, whatever. Well, eventually the door closes and I'm like, okay, again, nothing weird. And I could see all the kids were next to me. Eventually like the light goes off and the door still closed and nobody comes out of the bathroom all night. <laughs> they were both saying they were in bed all night. Well, she and my dad were saying that they were in bed all night. They're like, we didn't get up at all to go to the bathroom. And it's like, uh, I'm sitting there thinking no. somebody broke into our house no. and was only in our bathroom for some reason. <laughs> they just the really had to go. Or was it like, no, it just, it, it closed. The lights would be turned on in the middle of the night in the ho in that mm -hmm. house for no reason. We would walk downstairs in the morning and like the living room light would be on and we'd be like, did somebody come downstairs in the living room? Just not turn off the light? Didn't, nope. didn't we, when I worked night shift, remember I worked night shift at the prison? Mm -hmm. We came, you guys woke up one morning and the front door was wide open? Yes. <gasps> that was probably what? the most terrifying. It's like- And it was, and it was locked nope. from the inside. And it was open? And it was wide open. Oh. And of course, it's these old Pennsylvania homes, so there was no screen door or yeah, anything. Right. It was just door wide open. This, I want to say it was still in the winter time we were living there, Because I came home and I'm like, why in the hell is the door? Everyone was sound asleep upstairs. And it was those old bolts that none of the kids could reach. And I'm like, why mm. in the hell is the door wide open? They're all asleep. I get home. They're all asleep. And... It happened a couple of times yeah. that the door was wide open. And like the few times we were able to talk to the neighbors, they were like, they looked at us like we were crazy. They were like, we don't have that issue. Yeah, and it, it happened one time with me, and this is when I you actually put the bolt bolt on, you know, the, the sliding chain. Because when, when I was working, we wouldn't put the chain on because obviously yeah, I, could, I couldn't get in the house. Then. But when I would be home, we would put the chain on, come downstairs, the door's wide open. No. Oh. Of course, it was in like a crappy neighborhood in Pennsylvania like right. think of East so, Cleveland yeah. type neighborhood no thank you I would shut my pants if I came down so of course like you were always assuming like the worst was happening mm -hmm. and then it's just like there was no explanation of what just happened like nobody broke in there was no sign of forced entry nothing was moved and it's like hey. all right <laughs> I don't know what we just did <laughs>
what we went through. And then the, ho the Oak Hill house being built on the burial oh, ground. What? Typical, like, poltergeist type yeah. story. Built on, the burial built on an Indian burial ground. Oh, story time. So this was 2003, you, four. You bought this house. Oh, it was uh, three, just, and then we moved from there to Pennsylvania. Yeah. So it was so, right before we moved to Pennsylvania. It's one of those like you buy it. Uh, it looks like a trailer, but it's not. It's two ha halves of the house, and when oh, you put yeah, it on the I lot, like they put yeah. them together. Yeah. We had one of those, and they were just like, okay, all you have to do is just find the lot of land that yeah. you want. Well, they, they, they found us a plot of land. They're like, okay. oh, we've got the land. Oh, I'm sure they did. And, and you really know, all you have to do is buy, you know, and here we'll just, I'm like, all right, you know, went ahead, and they, they showed us where the land was. I was like, oh, cool, it's kind of out in the country. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nice little school district. I'm like, cool, fine, whatever. We had the worst time in that house. The, I mean, it was just absolutely horrible absolutely horrible and it turned up i mean it was big indian big indian land down there and we didn't even know about it till the neighbor brought something up the one day and he's just like didn't you guys know that when you signed the paperwork saying that no. this is, used to be burial ground they like did not disclose they that. let us know when we signed our paperwork and it was just like that was not something they brought up which would probably explain why the lot was so freaking cheap it was just, so it was the worst. what kind of stuff worst. was happening? Well, we had all the stuff during the hurricanes where things would be completely out of the ordinary for a hurricane. We got hit with five hurricanes that year we built the house. Yeah. Because that was the year Katrina came through. Oh, Katrina, And, and we yeah. got hit with five. So we got hit with the beginning half of Katrina before it went to Louisiana. Yep, yep I remember that. Um, I think that was the same oh, year as Char Charlie or Charles. I think that was I think that was Charles, and then we yeah, had. Um, but yeah, we had we had five of that them. That was one of the worst ones that yep. came through. Yeah, I remember that one. Um, that one. That was the year. year. Yeah, <laughs> we had um, power lines down. Yeah, it was bad. That one hit us more than Katrina. Kevin tried killing himself. Yeah, that was when my dad had his stroke the first year. He had a stroke in his house in the house, and then he tried killing himself in the house. Mm -hmm. Um, he went he went completely insane in that house um, like to the point where he was just like we need to move and get out of here and it this is like it they purchased the house so it was like it's not like a rented house where we can just up and no, move like you put all of your yeah. money into this um, refused to get a job because of it yeah, like Jeremy the, Jeremy jumped out the window and ran away yeah what? What? the kids were constantly calling 911 yes what so we constantly have 911 showing up or calling us at eventually once it happened enough times that they were so just like, the like, kids call 911 again. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no emergency. Sorry. So, Wait, what? Yeah, if they just, I don't, I don't know. Um, they each had their own rooms and then eventually all moved into one room together. Yep. It, I don't know. The kids just. They hated playing outside during the nice days. Yeah, they, didn't, they wouldn't go outside. They just said we don't like the outside, and it wasn't just like we don't like the outside because it's hot. And we had, and we we had a constant turtle path. Yep, the turtle, and we had the the couple of gators that would sometimes yeah. swing around the neighborhood. The gators, the gators, because oh. we were because I showed him finally this year where that that house is. It's like two blocks away from Indian Creek, so it was like right by the swamp yeah. land. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was just it was just a weird. He just had these weird vibes, and it just I don't know it just affected everyone just a little differently in the house. Everyone was just a little... The fact that I knew a cat, my cat was knocked up. And we only home? had one cat. The cat went outside, came back in, and Abby goes, the cat's pregnant. I'm like, no, yeah. it's not. Sure oh. enough, she comes running across okay. the... She comes with kittens in her mouth a couple, one couple of weeks One of them later. she buried in mom's closet, the, the sick one. So, of course, oh. like, mom's laying down to go to bed one night, and she's like, I heard a chirping. <laughs> I don't know where the chirping came from, but I'm hearing it. So she's digging through her closet and she eventually finds this sickly little cat. She, my cat did that too. She, but, um, she put it with me yeah. for months and then I took care of it and I nursed it and then of course eventually died. But I was like six years old and I was like, oh my God, my cat trusted me with her runts, mm -hmm. with her sick baby. I was like, wait a minute, does she think I'm garbage? Or does she think I'm actually going to fix this baby? I can't decide between the two. Yeah, no, with ours, she buried the runt in her closet and had her kittens in my dresser.
because I had a captain's bed. So she, she found a way in, in between and just nested. And I had all these kittens in my room. She and I'm like, all in my room. like, oh, God. I loved it. I woke up one morning and there was these kittens all over me. And it was amazing. My cat would rat, like pick them up by the nape of their necks and just put them on top of me when I was laying in my bed. I, it was the best moment of my life. It was so great. Yeah, that, that one wasn't too, it was just, it just gave off these weird yeah. vibes. That... Nothing like crazy, crazy happened. It was just a lot of weird things kind of linked up randomly and nobody felt really like comfortable. It was, it was just, a, it was just like a charge. It was just a, just a weird, nothing like those other, <laughs> just looking at those other houses. Because those are the ones, like, I can think of off the top of my head. Just because, like, I was old enough to finally start understanding and putting things together. Like, that's not normal. Yeah. That's something that we don't actually deal with. And the fact that nobody liked the apartment after Kevin died. No. No, because he was still there. Yeah. And the fact that the cat alerted you that he died. We well, had the cat and the kids. One of the kids, Bree or Jeremy, Jeremy, came into my room and was just like, "Something's wrong." He heard so, a noise. Yeah, my and he, and he called me. Mm -hmm. He goes, "Mom, I heard a noise." I was at work, and he goes, "Mom, I heard a noise." And I'm like, "Go wake up your dad. Why are you calling me at work? It's midnight." Mm -hmm. And he's like, "Well, the, the cat's making a weird noise, and I'm hearing all these noises." And I'm like, "Go wake up your dad." Don't call me at work. What can I do at work? And he goes in and he goes, oh, I can't wake Dad up. And we'll say, well, wake up Abby. And so he's like, all right, fine. So he goes and wakes up Abby. And I'm like, Abby, go wake up your Dad. Jeremy says he's hearing these noises and the cat was making all these weird noises. She's like, fine. <laughs> so she goes in there and she's realized what happened. He had a heart attack in his sleep. And the noises we were hearing was him gargling and, and dying. Trying. And the cat was there with him. Oh my god. And the cat was <laughs> alerting you. Alerting. Because, like, he slept on his back, so obviously, with the heart attack, wrong. everything he was vomiting and just was swallowing back it back in. And Jeremy heard it. And Jeremy was living in the closet at the time. <laughs> what? <laughs> we, we had a huge closet. A huge, it was like a huge, huge. supply supply closet that could we turned it into a bedroom it was big enough to fit a twin size mattress in there and a dresser and he was just like i don't really go in my room because at this point he likes to be out and about uh -huh. so we're like okay we fit a mattress and a dresser in there you're fine and the hallway was all the way or the closet was all the way at the other end of the hallway from where his oh, bedroom perfect. was yeah but the fact that he was able to hear that and he was just like knowing something wasn't right yeah. but then, then like after that it his spirit just didn't leave the apartment and it was just a it felt toxic all of a sudden yeah in the house. I mean it was I mean everyone was fighting everyone was nobody was happy it was it was very intense it was very very bad in the apartment very very bad like three went to church like one or two times and then she came back one day and she's like I don't feel right going to church I feel guilty going to church guilty and Kevin was the type of person where he's like church is for sinners who are trying to repent themselves and you don't need to go to church like he's very anti church related and all of a sudden like she was open to the idea of you know maybe this will help me heal maybe make me feel better about him passing and then all of a sudden she's like no, I will not go back. That's the dog I was hearing no. across the street. There was something else. There was there something else. There was something else. What did you guys hear? I'm hearing talking. Like yeah. a male voice. What? What did you guys hear? It's like, I almost like it sounds like the announcer guy at a fair talking. Oh, shit, I hear it. No, I hear it. Oh, 
I mean, sometimes we do have people that walk up and down the street, but that doesn't sound. It's way too. It's too, it's too close muffled. sound. Yeah. yeah. It's way too close. Yeah, so now I'm hearing it back here. And that's not them because they're up there. Do you think it's the guy that has the fire pit right over here? There's a guy back there? There's a house right there. No, I said suck it. You're going alone. I didn't know that there was a house that close. Nope, I said no, it's not a house. Was that was just a. Uh, you know about that trail? I followed that trail and I found his fire pit in his um, log, in his house is 50 feet. Well, I told you, That's Kathy cool. lives over off of Almeida, right and one of the guys actually owns all this stuff back here, I, but I, I don't think he trail. goes all the way back. I went back. walking earlier, and I thought it's he was going to bring me back here, but it actually took me way back into that, those woods, and there was a bunch of branches, and I got lost in the woods. <laughs> lost <laughs> it the doesn't woods. bring you back here, just so you know. Hmm. It takes you to the house, or a bunch of different trails up down yonder. I didn't realize there was, I mean, we've never heard anyone from over there. Yeah, we've never seen a fire pit. Did he go? He, yeah, that's I, why he, that's why he cut that path. With I decided not to because as I walked over there, I saw something go in. And then I walked up and I saw something come around the corner, stop and go back. I said, nope, never mind. Mm -mm. Wait, you saw? Oh. Like a figure. On that note, I gotta work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Hey guys, it's Tyler here. I hope you enjoyed that little live sneak peek we had there. Um, that's just kind of an example of things to come, so tune in and enjoy everything we got. Thanks.